Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. I'm going to look at another kind of weird thing today. This is a 1960s desktop radio. Uh, it looked like it was for an office. The owner has the cover here. Probably just AM since there's no band selector or anything. Um, made in Japan. Transistor 7. It operates on four double A's. It's dead. Uh, no sign of life whatsoever. Battery compartment doesn't appear to be really corroded. So uh, we're going to kind of take this apart, troubleshoot it, and figure out what's going on with it. And so it looks like it's easy enough to get into. We've just got perimeter screws along the edge here. So let's open it up, get inside, and, and see what's up with it. All right, so this is kind of what I didn't want to see. I couldn't really see the battery compartment that well with the little opening that's on the back, but we can see that the uh, that this thing will focus here. Come on, find something to focus on. Focus on my nail, nail. Anyway, um, let's get some light on it. Maybe that'll help it. You can see the crusty battery terminal there and that one there, which is completely loosened up. What we really want to hope is that the uh, battery garbage hasn't leaked into the radio somehow. Looks fairly straightforward. I think what we'll do is we'll get a sharp knife or something. We'll see if we can scrape some of this off. This is why I always harp on people for leaving batteries and things that they're not going to use for a long time. Because you get stuff like this. I don't know if you can see that, but the you know, camera doesn't want to focus for some reason. There's something about this machine that it doesn't want to focus. I don't know why, but the uh, crusties will prevent any kind of real connection. Yeah, let's go back here and see if we can't crank this up a little bit. Yeah. Anyway. That's pretty gross right there. So uh, I'm going to get a wire brush and clean all of this. Uh, we'll check this connection here, which is obviously pretty crusty too, and see where this leads to. So give me a minute to do that. So this is the end cap that presses up against the battery, and this is crusty, but there's also terminals here on the side, which then connect to this ring piece in here. If it'll focus on that, I'm not sure. This thing's kind of pissing me off today. Uh, that ring on the outer side, it's all crusty looking. That's your battery connection right there. And then I need to follow where that goes and find out where it terminates because obviously the radio isn't going to get any voltage if that's all crustied up. Pretty awful in there. Unfortunately this is pressed into the cabinet so it's not like I can just pull it out and burnish it. There's probably some wire that's soldered to the other side of this thing that's all gummed up. Alright, I'm going to get some uh, heavy duty deoxin chemicals and see if we can't clean a lot of that up. Alright, so this is a little bit better cleaned up. Let's see if I can get this in here holding the camera. Nope. <laughs> Man, that thing does not want to stay in there. We might have to come up with another solution for this uh, battery compartment. So the plastic is kind of worn out on that too and it doesn't really want to stay in place. And why is there so much resistance here? 
Hmm. Okay, I'm wondering if somebody didn't add that little plate there and it wasn't there before to try to fix whatever conductivity issues he had. Because you literally can't fit the, all the batteries in. This plate takes up the available space even with the spring compressed. So I'm going to get that out of there and try again. Okay, well with a little plate out, all the batteries get in there. Let's grab a meter and see if we can uh, get some voltage from the battery compartment to the radio. It's definitely still got some poor conductivity. You can see that we're only hanging around at like 3 volts. And if I kind of jiggle the batteries and stuff like that, that changes. Yeah, if I mess with that end cap there, it shoots up a little bit. That needs to be 6 volts, and then the batteries pop out. So we need to work on this a little bit more. Alright, that's much better. It's stable now. We're at 5.667. And when I mess with the little connector thing back here, it's pretty stable. So uh, I think now's the time to see if it will actually work or not. So let's put the cover back on so the batteries don't fall out and see what we get. Mm, still dead. Maybe it's a bad power switch. Not even a hiss from the speaker. Nothing. Ah, looks like we gotta take this thing apart a little bit more. Okay, I'm still getting my battery voltage, but if I come here down to the switch, I'm not getting any continuity through the switch, so um, I'm gonna try to see if I can just jumper that, stick a little jumper in there and see if it comes to life or not. But if that doesn't work, then or maybe the switch is connected somewhere else on the board, but based on where it's mounted, and the fact that that's your supply voltage and you've got another terminal here, one would think uh, that just by jumpering this thing like this, I should get something. Turn the volume up here and see if it comes alive. Maybe there's something else to it. Yeah, jumpering that doesn't do squat. So uh, let's take loose the remaining screws and see if we can get this board out of here and then see what's going on with that switch. Okay, so here's our radio out of the cabinet. We got everything separated. And uh, the eyelet for the power input came off of this screw here. So it comes in here and it goes through the switch and the output of which goes to that other eyelet there uh, which I guess then completes the circuit for the entire thing because this is your ground bus that goes through the entire machine pretty much. Very, uh, very 60s. So first let's ohm out the switch with it open and make sure our switch is alive, although I doubt it. And then uh, bypassing the switch, sorry about this for a second, uh, we can see about getting some power to it, maybe seeing if it works. So just with the switch, yeah, the switch is okay. Um, let's see if, uh, yeah, that bus up to that point's okay. All right, so uh, let me get the regulated supply on it. We'll hook up some 6-volt power. Since we know that switch is okay, we'll kind of go from there. Maybe it was the little eyelet that was bad, not making proper contact. Who knows? We'll find out. All right, so we've got our power connected directly here. We've got our little regulated power supply. I'm going to turn it on. So we get some current draw, like about 100 milliampers. That's pretty high for a little battery operated thing. Get the slightest amount of noise through the speaker. It's otherwise not doing anything.
So there must have been something wrong with that eyelet on the board. Just wasn't doing much of anything or just because I couldn't hear anything. But when I activate the switch, the radio definitely gets power because it does draw current. So uh, let's check a couple more things. Maybe I've just got a bad intercoupling capacitor or something. Okay, so just some preliminary tests uh, on the ESR meter. This is open. This doesn't register at all, and so is this one. The rest of these, the ESR is really high, but it probably wouldn't kill the machine. Uh, this is in your audio uh, driver stage pass, so that could piss something off or uh, prevent the signal from going through. I'm not sure what this does. It's definitely a, a buffer capacitor for some power supply line because there is 5.3 volts on it. So I'm just going to change both of those out real quick. This one's a 10 microfarad and the other one is a 40, 50 microfarad, so 47. So let's just swap those out real quick and see if that gives any change. And while I was replacing the first one, I noticed that this uh, wire here was just kind of hanging on and the wire was really oxidized. Now that appears to go to one of the speakers or one of the speaker leads. I don't know if that's meaningful because we still kind of heard a hiss from the speaker, but I'm not sure yet. But anyway, let's get the other capacitor changed out and then let's test it again. All right, so we got both caps in. Probably the biggest challenge here was getting my soldering iron in so that I didn't kill the dial cord. I almost made a solder bridge those two connections down there just because it's really tight to work on um, all right so now let's get our uh, our battery hooked up again and let's see if we get any more life out of this than we did before excuse me all right so we're hooked up let's fire it off again Same thing, got current draw, but no sound yet, not even static. Yeah, nothing at all, very interesting. Trying to see if I can flip this over. And we've got this uh, switchable speaker thing in here. I swear I was getting a hiss or something. Sometimes these can get funky, but messing with this doesn't really change anything. All right, let me take some voltage measurements. Okay, so let's take a look at our output transistors here. Got three volts, 2.2. Can't. Oh, I heard something. Yeah, that was just me busting the wire loose. Okay, so the speaker is obviously doing something because we heard it crackle when we applied and removed power. At 5.5 there, that's working. That's working. Four volts there, 1.4 there, four there. For there, 450. And that's got 0.1 volts across it. It's not quite on, but it should work. Yeah, let's come over here. It's 1.8. There's 4. 4.2. 4 0. 1.4. 4.3. So in theory, this should be doing something. Uh, 
very interesting. Let's see if I can inject a signal into the audio stage. Let's see if the audio stage is working. Okay, radio's on. Not very loud. It's very distorted too. I'm putting about maybe half a volt in. Is that capacitor I replaced? Interesting. So the radio is kind of trying to work. The audio stage isn't working very well. But that's, that at least tells us that the thing's kind of sort of alive. Uh, I guess now what we'll do is we'll, I'll try to inject an RF signal into it, like a really strong one, just dump it in the IF and see if we can get any IF activity with the scope. Okay, so just as a test, there's our 455 with a 1K riding on top of it, modulated just as a test. And then what I'll do is, let me get this hooked up and get the phone. Okay, either directly coupled or non-directly coupled. I'm not getting any IF activity. I mean, I can see my big giant signal at the input to the, uh, if I scope out the transistor, I can, I can see it at the input, but this isn't amplifying. Uh, and if I just kind of drape the 455 around the uh, second IF um, and scope out the second IF amplifier, it's not really doing anything anyway. I just broke my power free. Let's hook this back up. The third IF detector, I'm getting this very very tiny signal almost doesn't register it's just really tiny so uh, but all the voltages on these appear to be okay like they should be running so I think that uh, realistically uh, this is going to need all of those IF transistors replaced the oscillator is obviously not running. I can dump as strong a signal as I can into the antenna input, or and it just doesn't do anything. And the audio is just really weak and distorted. So uh, I think the amount of time that we're going to invest into this is probably far more than I'm going to get paid for. So uh, I'm going to make a phone call to him really quick and see what he wants to do, because I can see just wasting a bunch of time on this that I'm really not going to get compensated for. Okay, so uh, I spoke with the owner of this thing and he really doesn't want to invest that much time into it, which I can understand. I mean, it would be probably close to $200 worth of time uh, just to get this thing working. And uh, with all the other stuff I've got going on, and he's kind of impatient. He had two other radios that I fixed that uh, the timeline he wasn't very happy on just but I'm busy so uh, what can you do but anyway to sum up uh, there's no IF activity whatsoever even if directly injecting uh, via capacitor into the first IF by the third IF you've got this itty bitty little signal here so either I've got loss in the IF cans or more than likely the transistors just aren't working like they should and yeah, I could pull them all out and I could put, you know, various germanium transistors I have in and kind of sort of get it to work. But the amount of time uh, he just is not willing to pay for. So we're just going to button this one back up. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching the troubleshooting process at least. Uh, we kind of got to a point where it just became uneconomical to proceed any further. And sometimes that's just the case with these things. But... You know, if he ends up abandoning it or something, and maybe I'll tinker with it some more, but unlikely, no. So, thanks for watching, guys. More stuff to come soon.